to you. You can print it off. You can have it. You can take it to the IRS and print that off. Amen. Amen. And so we give God glory and honor. So let us stand for the reading of the word of God. Again, I'm so grateful uh, for all that is doing. Um, got some more reports for you uh, regarding those who have received new jobs. And so we're going to continue to let people give their testimony regarding new jobs. Uh, he's not here tonight. And so next time, I'm hoping that when he gets here, we'll go ahead and, and let him come and give that testimony. Amen. 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 And so we give God glory. So we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. Praise the Lord, brother. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. And we're going to then go to Acts 4, verse 16. 20. As the brother said, we are looking for leaders and those to get involved in the kingdom of God. If you're a singer or say you know some songs, come on and talk to me and let's, let's talk to sister and we can let us know those songs that you know that we can learn more songs. Uh, we can have more leaders, more ministers, more in the house of God. So uh, I would say to some of the, the mothers and the elders, we want you to get involved this in Jesus' name. Amen. So some things we may not know that you know, and we want you to go ahead and sing those songs of Zion. Amen. At the church I grew up in, they had a senior choir. That senior choir, they took us back, but it, something happened when they started to sing, and the Holy Ghost began to move. Amen. All right, Mother Smith, I see you moving your head, so we need you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. We give God glory and honor. Amen. And so the reading of the word, Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47, it reads, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and in breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Let's go to Acts chapter 4, verse 16 to 20. Acts chapter 4, which is the next uh, two chapters there. Chapter 4, verse 16 to 20. And the word of the Lord says, saying, what shall we do to these men? Talking about the apostles. But that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them in manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it, but that is spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them. They speak henceforth to no man in this name. Talking about in Jesus' name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. I'm going to teach tonight from the subject, committed no matter what. Committed no matter what. Tell your neighbor, I'm committed no matter what. Let us pray and ask God to help us tonight to learn this lesson. Father God, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for all that you have done. I thank you for blessing the saints of God to make it here on Wednesday night. God, they went through so many things today. Lord God, the enemy coming from all different directions, God, messing with their mind. Maybe some, Lord God, are tired. Some are weary, Lord God. Some have problems financially. Lord God, so many things and oppositions, oh God. But Father, in their mind and in their heart, they made a commitment to be in the house of the Lord. And Father, everything that was trying to hinder them, it did not stop them, oh God. But they kept going forward. I thank you, Lord God. Keep your hands upon the people of God. Touch their marriages. Touch their family. Touch their finances. Touch their businesses. Touch their job, Lord God. As long as you see that them, Lord God, being committed unto you, Father, I pray that you would help them along the way. We give you glory. We give you honor. Open up our understanding. Help me, Lord God, 
as your vessel to teach tonight that Lord God when we leave here we can have a better understanding of what committed what being committed is all about I pray in the name of Jesus as we see the day approaching God the enemy knows that God we don't have a lot of time so he's going to do everything he can but Lord I pray that the saints of God will stay committed until the end in Jesus mighty name we bind every spirit of distraction everything that is not like you every Lord sleepiness and slumberiness that will come over us right now help us to hear this word tonight that will help us Lord God in our walk and in our faith in the name of Jesus Christ we give you glory and honor in Jesus name clap your hands unto God as you be, be seated and just let the Lord know I'm going to stay committed in Jesus name committed no matter what this is the subject that the Lord has been given me in my mind as I sometimes I'll sit there and I'll just contemplate on things that I've read in the scriptures things that the Lord has put on my heart and my mind and I begin to think about what's going on in the world today what's happening even in our community what's happening if you look over in the Middle East what's happening over there in Israel and all the things that are happening even in America and all around the other states that people's hearts are failing them people are feeling like there is no hope people are feeling like I don't know what I'm going to do and some are just being nonchalant as saying it is what it is and so what I want to talk to you tonight is about what God gave me and what he began to tell me was son I want you to stay committed no matter what I want you to let the Saints know stay committed no matter what we are getting down to the wire and to the end of this thing you might be saying well pastor I've heard that so many times that about Jesus is coming back and all of these things but I'm telling you do not get tired of hearing that because that is true the book of Amos talked to us in chapter 6 and let us know woe to them that are eased in Zion those who feel like I'm going to just be easy, I'm going to lay back, everything is just going to go on as normal. Don't be easy right now. Don't get relaxed. Don't get comfortable thinking that everything is just going to go on as it's going. The Bible says, woe to them that are eased in Zion. Don't get eased. Don't hear a message and then leave out and just be to say, that was a good message and I'm going back to doing what I'm doing. God is letting us know through these messages that you're hearing over this pulpit that hey I'm soon to come but I want you to stay committed until the end it brought to my understanding my mind I don't know about you how many of you follow the Olympics but in 1992 there was a man by the name of Derek Raymond from Great Britain who ran in the Olympics in final and did a 400 meet now, there's a picture of this young man right here. His name is Derek, Derek Raymond. It was said that he would be the winner of the 1992 Olympics for the 400 meter. It was said that the stadium was packed for about 65,000 people that were watching and holding their breath to see who would win this race. When the gun went off, Raymond took off and headed to the finish line. But all of a sudden, while he's running, something happened to his hamstring where he began to buckle and fall out. And began to fall down and began to hold to the back of his leg. And Raymond was in agony. He was in agony. And all of a sudden, as he's sitting there, he all of a sudden, he gets up out from his position that he was in. And he started limp. As he was limping, his whole mind was, I got to make it to the finish line. And as he's trying to make it to the finish line, somehow this man that's next to him began to get away from the security and was able to get on the track and field upon the field. As he began to get on the field, he begins to pick up the young man. And as he's picking up the young man, the young man is saying, let me go, let me go. Leave me alone. I got to make it to the end. I got to make it to the end. And when he turned to see who it was, it was his very own father. His father said, son, if you want to keep it, if you want to make it to the end, if you want to stay committed, I'm going to get you to the end of this thing. And what God is letting us know right now in this time, that if you want to finish, God says, I'm going to finish it for you. All I want to know is if you're going to stay committed. 
if you're going to stay in the faith? Are you going to stay holding on? Are you going to stay coming to the house of the Lord? Are you going to stay with this thing? And to death do us part, God, I'm going to be with you. I'm not leaving you. I'm not going to forsake you. You never left me. You never forsake me. You're here with me always. And God says, as long as you want to finish, God says, I'll be right there. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. I know you oppressed. I know things are happening in your life. I know you're struggling so many different ways. But just keep moving. Keep walking. Keep going towards the finish line. Stay committed to God. Lord, I'm hurting and I'm broken. Father, my family isn't torn up. Father, my job, things are coming at me. My finances, Lord God, the business is not moving like it should. Things are not happening like it should. My children, oh God, my mind, God, I don't know what's going to happen, but God says keep moving. I got your back. I'm holding you. When you don't seem like you can handle it, God says lean on me. Trust in me. Keep going. Stay committed. No matter what, no matter what the opposition is, God says stay committed to me. And so I looked at this young man as he's in tears, as he's crying. And when he got to the end, the whole stadium stood up and begin to applaud. Even though he didn't win the race, even though he didn't come in first place, even though he didn't win any type of medal, it was the fact that he finished and he stayed committed to what he signed up for. I don't know about you in this house tonight, but how many are committed to finish this race with God? How many are saying, Lord, I'm going to need you to help me, but I must finish. I must stay committed to this race. This reminds me of the scripture text when Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 to 8, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course and I, I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I'm right in this race. I got something that I'm looking for. A crown of righteousness. With the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, people of God. It's not just the pastor. But if you will stay committed, God says there's something laid up for you. If you will stay committed, teams, if you will stay committed to, to what you believed in when you first got the Holy Ghost, when you first went down in Jesus' name, when you first heard the gospel, when you first came to the altar and cried out and began to cry, and God said, I mean, he knows every tear. When you stay committed to this team, God says, not just for me only, but to all unto all of them also the, that love his appearing. Everybody that's looking for God to appear, looking for Jesus on that great day. God says, if you will hold on, I got a reward for you in the end. Today, it is hard to find people that are truly committed. It is hard to find people that are wanting to stay committed. People today like to stay away from this word called commitment. Most men don't like this word called commitment. That's why they will date you for 10 years and 20 years, but they still never put a ring on your finger. Ladies, I want you to say it right now. Uh-uh. No ring, there's nothing else that's going to go on. No ring, no thing. No ring, no thing. You can't get close to me. You can't do this. We ain't shacking up. We ain't doing this. We ain't. Uh, no ring, then no thing. We can't get together because what people don't want to do is be committed today. The average person will change jobs. 12 times in their career and as many as 60% of Americans will have extra mar marital relationships so what I'm not trying to tell you that I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with trying to change jobs because you're trying to make a come up or you're trying to get higher you're trying to get paid but when you're jumping from average from job to job I'm here for one month I'm here for two months I'm here for six months that's not showing any type of commitment and jobs like to see somebody committed I don't know if you know this is not that type of message, but I'm just trying to put it out there. I was on my job. I've been on my job for 15, going on 16 years. So wherever I go, somebody's going to say, oh, he's committed. He ain't jumping ship to do this and do this and do this and do that. I'm just not coming up and trying to make up this and do that. But I'm committed to what I'm involved in. And that's the same thing. Even when it comes to marital relationship, people will just be in this and then they'll get over here. They'll get over here and they'll go over here. And by the time you know they've been in so many different relationships, 
relationship because nobody's committed. Even out in the world, even grocery store chains have had to create loyalty cards in an attempt to buy people's commitment. What are they trying to do? I'm just trying to get you plugged in with this commitment. Even insurance companies, even the insurance company that I work for, just trying to get you committed and stay with this insurance company. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but we have to be committed in the house of the Lord. God is saying that when you signed up your name, when you were filled with the Holy Ghost and got baptized in Jesus' name, how many are going to be committed? How many are going to be standing with God on that day? How many that was married to God when they got baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, when God put on that ring, that Holy Ghost ring? You were committed, but God says, I don't want anybody cheating on me. I don't want anybody turning and going another way and getting another relationship. I don't want you looking for some other satisfaction in other things. I am your husband and you are my bride. I'm the one that's taking care of you. I'm the one that's provided for you. But sometimes we get to a place where we will say, Lord, I understand that you're this, but I want to be committed to over here. And God says, no, you can't choose me and somebody else. It's either me or you or you or them. Who you gonna be with? Who you gonna be with? God says, who you with? Are you with me or are you with them? To the end, I must stay committed to God. Come on, clap your hands. And so whether it be marriage, whether it be friendships, people fall out of friendships. I'm cool with this one, they cool with that one. I'm back cool with this and I'm back cool with that one. I'm Facebook with them and I ain't just Facebook with them. I'm Instagramming with them, I'm not Instagramming. I'm not dealing with them no more. Whether it be jobs or even down to church. Even when it comes to church, nowadays people don't like the word committed. When you say committed, people run. And even when it comes to being committed to God, I want you to pay attention to this because anytime I ask anybody, I'll ask them, are you committed to God? And everybody will say, oh yes, I am committed to Jesus. We'll give a testimony. I love Jesus. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. We give a song. All of these songs I'm committed. I love them. I love them. But let me look at this scripture when it talks about you cannot be committed to God unless you are committed to his church. How am I saying that pastor? If you're not committed to his church you can't be committed to God. Let me first give you the definition of what being committed is before we get into the lesson. The definition of being committed means feeling dedication and loyalty to a cause, activity, or job. Wholeheartedly dedicated, pledged, or bind. Be in long-term emotional relationship with someone no matter what. Tell your neighbor, no matter what. I begin to think about people that are committed. I think about the Muslims. Look at how the Muslims, they are very committed. You've seen this before. They're committed to their beliefs. A Muslims are Muslims every day. They don't change to be another thing outside of being a Muslim. When you say that they're Muslim, they are a Muslim. They don't care where they are. When it's time to pray, they're going to pray right there in front of your face. Why? Because I am a Muslim. Wherever they are, whatever they're doing. But sometimes us, we can go to a restaurant and not want to pray over our food. Why? Because somebody is looking at us. I don't care. You can look at me all you want to. Matter of fact, join in with us over at the next table. What y'all about to do? Pray in Jesus' name. We about to get the whole restaurant involved in this prayer right there. It's too many closet Christians. Too many of us that hide it in the closet. Come on, Christians. Come on, apostolics. Come on, saints of the living God. If you are going to be a saint of God, be a saint of God. Be committed to what you signed up for. If I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian at school. If I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian on my job. If I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian in the community. Even in the store. If I see you across the hall, you need to say, praise the Lord, pastor. And I'll be like, praise the Lord. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Like, oh my God, his pastor. Just say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We can't just be sitting here 
Because I look at these Muslims, they pray, they commit it to Allah. They pray five times a day. It's hard for us to get up and pray five times a day. It's hard for us to get up and pray one day. God has said, can I get anybody that will pray without ceasing? Can I get anybody that will come to the house? He says, this house must be what? My house must be a house of prayer. Can I get anybody to be committed and come to the house of the Lord to pray? And he said, if I look at the Muslim, they believe in fasting. They believe making a pilgrimage to Mecca, which is over in Saudi Arabia. They're so committed that the extremist Muslims will strap a bomb on themselves to do what? To kill you. Why? Why am I strapping a bomb on my chest to kill you? Why? Because I'm committed to my God. This is what he tells me. It's nonsense, but I'm trying to get you how committed they are. They're so committed that they're willing to die for it. How many of you are willing to die for it? How many of you are willing to die for it? Is there anything in your life that you can sit there and say, I don't die for this. I hope the husbands would say, baby, I'll take a bullet for you. I hope the husband would put the wife and say, no, baby, you got that one. You got that one. Somebody, some husband needs to step in and say, baby, I'll take one for you. Is there anybody in here, brothers? Come on, somebody, wave their hands. Come on. I, I, listen, God, I, listen, let me tell you why I'm so committed to this thing. I'm so committed that if the Lord takes my life now, I would rather the Lord keep her and take me. Why? Because I know I'm walking right. I know I'm trying, so I'm not afraid because I'm committed to this thing. I'm a real Christian. I'm a real saint of God. Come on, people of God. If you ain't committed, you need to leave this day today and say, Lord, I got to be committed unto death. That's why the Muslims and even the Jews, they look at us and they say, I ain't impressed about no Christians in America. I'm not impressed by no Christian in America. Why? Because they'll let you know they ain't committed to nothing. They'll do this one day and they'll do this. They'll believe in this one day and they'll believe in this. And I'm not running around believing everything. I'm going to believe that which is written. I'm going to believe what the Bible says to believe. Whatsoever was written before time was written for our learning. So I'm going to believe what's in the scripture. You can come up with your philosophy, your bang the seat, and all of these different things. But I'm going to believe what the Bible says. Tell your neighbor I got to believe what the word of God says. Let me give you a couple of points regarding this, this subject being committed to God no matter what? And then wives, you can talk to your husbands when you get home and they didn't raise their hand and say, baby, we got to talk because I thought you were standing away from me. <laughs> All right. Amen. <laughs> amen. All right. I'm not trying to start nothing, but I'm just saying we need to be committed. Amen. 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 I see you, brother. Yeah, you put that back there. Tell him, my wife, I'm committed. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. So number one, how do you know you are committed to God? Look at James chapter 1, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. Look at what it says. Uh, ye doers of the word, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. When I hear God's word, I got to not only hear it, but God is requiring me to be a doer. I got to do what his word says. So many times we will hear God's word, his message. We'll come to church and we'll hear what God has to say. We'll read it on the screen, read it in the scripture. But God says, just hearing it is not enough. I want you to be a doer of the word as, long, as well as hearing. It. Amen. Jesus tells us in Mark chapter 12, verse 32 to 33. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said to the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all your strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. So if you say that you love God, it has to be with all of your heart, with all of your understanding, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And we have to do this as well as love our neighbor as ourselves. This is what God is looking for, people of God. If you're committed to God, you will want more of God. If you're committed to God, you will want to be put, you will want to put him first before anything. And I say to you, if there's anything that's taking a place 
of your you wanting to be in the presence of God or wanting more God, then you need to switch whatever that is. Whatever is trying to get more of your attention than God, you want to switch that. I don't care if it's a male, if it's a female, if it's a show, if it's something else, if it's family, if it's things, if it's money, if it's job, if it's business. Whatever is getting more of your time, you got to switch it and begin to say, Lord, I'm com more committed to you than this right here. Because if this falls apart and I still got you who actually gave me this. But if you, Lord, if my relationship with you fall apart, I'm not going to have anything. And so God is looking for us to be committed to him people of God notice Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 through 38 if they're looking at it in this NLT version make it simple and let us not neglect somebody say neglect. neglect our meeting together let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Look at what the Bible is telling us. It's letting us know that we have to be more committed now every day because God is returning, is drawing near. His return is drawing near, meaning Jesus is coming back. And the more that we see the time approaching, God is saying, come and meet together. Bring the body of Christ together. Come back together as much as you can. Why? Because I'm really coming. I'm coming. And if anybody doesn't like coming to church or like being in the presence of God, I don't know how you're going to survive when we get up there. I don't know. Are you going to say, hey God, I need to go on a vacation from the assembly for today. Let me go on the assembly. I don't want to be around you today praising God. But when we get up to heaven, we're just going to be worshiping and praising God. That's one of the main things that we'll be able to do to be in his presence worshiping and praising God. Somebody may say can we go clubbing? Can we go to can we do other things besides praise and worship God? No. We're going to be up there in his presence. So if you don't want to do that now here then I don't understand how you're going to want to do it up there. So that's why we got to be in the house of the Lord because I said it before now is that we're getting our practice in. You practice practicing right now. So when you say hallelujah, your hallelujah is how you going to do it when you get up there. So if you got a small hallelujah, hallelujah Lord, you going to bring that up there. I don't have a small hallelujah, but I got a low, a large, a loud hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want him to hear me over the other assembly. I want him to know that, hey, when I want and I'm looking for somebody that want to praise me, I'm looking for Brother Garment. When I'm looking for somebody that want to give me glory, I'm looking for my brother right there. I'm looking for my sister that wants to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm looking for somebody that want to be around me. Have you ever been around somebody that didn't want to be around you? Have anybody ever got on your nerves where you was like, will you get away from me? Come on, somebody. Has anybody ever got on your nerves? Has anybody ever got on your nerves and you just say, you know what? I'm tired of being around you. I'm tired. I hope it's not husbands and wives. But I'm tired of being around you. I'm tired of being around this boss. I'm tired of if it's husbands and wives. Come on, that's a bridge spirit right there. I got to go back to a hugger right now. Hug him right now. If you ain't close, just blow a kiss over to him and just say, baby, I love being around you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Just say, if she not here, think about it. Just think about it. So maybe she'll say, my husband thinking about me right now. But come on, people of God. You got to want to be around you. Be committed to that which God has put together. God put the church together, so we got to be committed to the church. Go to verse 26 to 29. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning, don't you know when you don't come to the house of the Lord, you're not in the presence of God? This is in the same scripture. I'm not trying to take it out of context. Look at what the scripture, I'm making it simple in the NLT. You can read it in the KJV, it doesn't change. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of truth, what is truth? That God wants us to be in his presence. There is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. This is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God. You say, I love Jesus. 
Jesus wants to see you in the house of the Lord. Jesus wants to see you on your prayer time. Jesus wants to see you reading about him in the scriptures. Jesus wants to see Jesus in your marriage. Jesus wants to see Jesus in your worship and your praise. God, the King of Kings wants to see himself living in you. God is saying, listen, if I'm in you, let's see if I'm really in you. And look at, we'll go back to verse 29, and have treated the blood of the covenant, which was made us holy as if it were common and unholy. I can't take this thing like it's, un like it's common, like church is what it is. God is what it is. My relationship with God, it is what it is. I, I love Jesus, but I, you know, I ain't got to be at church. No, the devil is alive because the body of Christ, we are the body of Christ. Say we are the body of Christ. That means Jesus Christ is the head. How you going to love me, but you don't love my head? How you going to love me and be able to say, I don't like, I don't like pastor. I like pastor Garvin. I like the top pastor, but I don't like the bottom pastor. I don't like none of that. That would be this. How you going to like me and don't like my wife? How you going to say, Pastor Garvin, we cool. But Sister Garvin, I ain't cool with her no way. I hate her. Now, I don't know any, come on, brothers, we're going to try this one more time. I don't know any brother in here that will allow somebody to come back at his wife, and if he's not a real man, he don't stand up and say, hey, brother, you need to chill out and get off my wife. Anybody in here, any brothers in here that will stand up for their wife and say, hey, you're not going to bring it over here. Amen? Amen, brothers? Hey, that's good. I like that, brother. Amen, brothers? Is there any brothers that were willing to stand up and say amen? Amen, brothers. Amen. Amen. That's just like you said. I love you. Come on, I'm going to put the kids involved. I like you, but I hate your mama. Is there anybody in here will sit there and say, oh, you like me, but you can't stand her? Oh, okay. You can do what you want to do with her. The devil is a lie. I love my mama. Don't you walk up on my mama. Don't you walk up on my mama. I'm going to tell you, I love her, and I'm not going to let you disrespect her and mistreat her. Amen? And this is what God is saying. How you going to love me, but don't like my bride? <laughs> How you gonna love Jesus? I said, how you gonna love me? But you don't like my wife. I don't deal with people in the church. The devil is a liar. Then you ain't gonna be standing with God. God says, I got a problem with you. Why? Because you don't like my wife. You keep talking about my wife. You keep hating on my wife. You don't want to be around my wife. You don't want to come and be around the gathering of my wife. How you gonna love me? But you don't love my wife. This is what God has said. If you committed to me, be committed all the way. Love what I love and hate what I hate. Be a part of what I'm a part of and don't be a part of what I'm not a part of. Don't go chasing out the false prophets that come into the city. Don't go for chasing out false churches. If you're going to be in a real church, be in a real church. If you're going to be in a real house, be in the real house. If you're going to be listening to truth, listen to truth. But don't go fake chasing out the false prophets and hearing false messages, hearing false preachers. If you're going to be in the house of the Lord, be in the house of the Lord. Come on, clap your hands if you believe the word of God tonight. Go down to verse 32 to 38. Look at what it says in that same scripture text. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were so exposed to public ridicule and were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. Look at verse 35. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come. Look at what it says, people of God. And not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. Anyone that is not committed to God, God says, I have no pleasure in with you. Amen. Right. Which leads me to my second point. The question is, what am I committed to? 
Think back in your mind right now. God, what am I giving more attention to than you? What am I committed to right now? People are trying to say I'm committed to God, but I'm telling you, you can't love Jesus and hate his body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Look at what it says. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. I'm going to read it one more time. Now ye are the body. You are the body of Christ and members in particular. So we all make up the body of Christ. You are a member of it. You are a member of it. You are a member of it. We are all members of this body. So I can't look at you like you're nothing. You're part of this body. When you're not here, I'm saying, man, something is missing in the body. Something is not right. The body is not functioning the way that it should. We want the body to be here. I'm looking for the body. So I can't say I don't need to be a part of the body because you are a member. Look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. I'm going to make it simple. Look at what it says in the NLT. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. I'm going to say it again. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme of over all who rise from the dead. So he is the first in everything. So we got to put God first in everything that we do. Tell your neighbor, I got to put God first. We have to think like this, people of God. My mind, my heart, my wants, and my treasures is all belongs to God. That's how you have to think. Everything you are and that you have, you got to say it all belongs to Jesus. Because if there's anything that you say, I have a treasure. This is what I'm hiding from God. Notice what Matthew 6 and 21 says. My brother said this before. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where is your treasure? What are you looking? What do you treasure the most? Whatever you treasure the most, God says, that's where your heart is going to be. And if that thing has your heart, God says, I don't have your heart then. I don't completely have your heart. You said out of your mouth, you love me, but your heart is not with me. You're thinking about something else. You're trying to get to something else. I got to leave church. Why? I got to go. Hurry up. I got something else that I'm trying to get to. Your heart is somewhere else. And God says, I want your heart. I want all of you. I want every complete part of you. Amen? Amen. You have to ask yourself, what am I really committed to? And anything that you're involved in, there's a song that says that only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him will be counted. And so what does that say? That no matter what you do on this earth, if it's not for Jesus Christ, it will not be counted. If you're not doing it to give him the glory, God says it will not be counted. All of these things that we do, that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, God says, do it for me so it count, people of God. The Bible says it, uh, to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And everything you do for God, God says your labor is not in vain. If you do it for me, it's not in vain. That's why we will say many times, we will say, hey, uh, pastor, can you pray uh, that I get this job? I say, yes, I'm going to pray that God will bless you with that job. But don't allow that job to take your commitment out of the house of God. Because what it will be, you say, I'm getting this job, but God, it has nothing to do with you. You wear everything God blesses you. You say, God, I want this because I want to bless your house. I want to give you glory. When I go on this job, I want people to know about you. Everything that I'm doing, I'm trying to give you glory. And everything that I do, I don't want it to be in vain. I want God to count it and say, you did a good job with that son. Because I want to be a good steward on everything he gives me. Amen? Let me go to my last point. We must be committed 
to the Lord 100%. Say that to yourself. I must be committed to the Lord 100%. Our scripture text shows us that the apostles did not care unto death. They were committed and loyal to the Lord. Pull up our scripture text. Acts chapter 2 verse 20, 46 to 47. Look at what the Bible says. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God. And having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily. Such as should be saved. The reason why God is going to add to Bell Blade New Life Tabernacle. Because he's seeing committed people. He's seeing committed people. And when he sees committed people, God has no problem pouring out blessings in this house. When he sees people that are committed, he says, listen, I don't have a problem blessing that church right there. I don't have a problem blessing those body of believers right there. Whether they need jobs, whether they need healing in their bodies, whether they need doors open, whether they need their businesses to be promoted, whether they need things in their family, whether they need things for their children, whatever it is, I know they're not going to take what I give them and run. They say, listen, God says, I will be committed to you as long as you're being committed to me. I will pour out blessings upon you as long as you're committed to me. Amen. Even when opposition came upon the apostles, uh, look at Acts chapter 4, verse 16 to 20. I'm hasten to close. Saying, what shall we do to these men, these apostles, these people that won't stop talking about Jesus, that won't stop meeting and talking about Jesus, that won't stop coming to the temples, that won't stop giving him glory and honor, that won't stop doing these miracles? What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle have been done by them is manifest to all them that that dwell in Jerusalem. Don't you understand that when we stay committed to God, that everybody will know who we are. When we are committed to God in this house, everybody will know who you are. No matter where you go, they will say, that's a child of God. I recognize it. Why? They may not understand, but it is the relationship that you have with God. You're so committed. God says, anything that you have need of, ask me and I'll do it for you. God says, anything Anything that you have me, call and ask me, and I'll do it unto you. Why? Because I can trust you, Abraham. I can trust you that whatever I gave you as the promise, you won't try to keep it for yourself. That when I ask you for it, you will say, God, hey, it wasn't mine in the first place. You just allowed me to have it. So if you want it back, even if I was asking for you, even if you were promising me this, God, I'm going to stay committed. I'm going to stay committed. Whatever you want to do it with it, God, you do what you want to do with it, God, because I'm going to stay committed to you. Come on, people of God, open up your mouth and say, I'm going to stay committed. Look at verse 17. But that is spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them. Look at what it said. Threaten them. Even when the devil comes around you and starts threatening you on your job, you know you ain't going to have this job long because of what you're doing. And you know that you need to stop coming to church. And even when they threaten you, even when they tell you, don't you bring out that Bible on your lunch hour. We don't want to see that. Even when they are threatening you on your job, even when they're telling you, listen, you can't be at church all the time. You got to be more committed to this job. The devil is a liar. I got to be more committed to God than the job. Why? Because God gave me the job. And boss, you ain't going to have me to leave unless God wants me to leave. Come on, people of God. Look at verses 18 and what it says. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. People trying to tell you, don't say it. There's something about the name of Jesus. I got to say the name of Jesus. I got to declare the name of Jesus. I can't declare no other name but Jesus. But look at verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Rather be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God. You think I'm going to do what you tell me to do? That rather what God tells me to do? The devil is a liar. I'm going to do it. Whatever God tells me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Even today, I'm looking at even at schools, people of God, young people, the Muslims will go to school and say I can't do that. And they will have respect for the Muslims. They will have respect. But soon as a Christian say, I can't do that. You got to do it. I can't do this. You got to do this. But they'll give a break for them. Something is twisting and turning in the atmosphere. It is the Antichrist trying to do what? Move himself 
right in Christians, right in saints of God, but you got to stay committed to God, you got to stay committed to truth, to what's real, and we got to stay committed to come into the house of the Lord, come on, open up your mouth and say, God, I got to stay committed to you. Verse 20 says, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Which means that which I've learned from the word of God. My tongue and my language and my word will never change. It is going to be the way it's going to be until the end. We have to be like the apostles and be committed. So tonight God gave me this message. It says you can come. He gave me this message for a reason, people of God. You may say, well, that was a good message. But some of you, after tonight, something is going to come up against you. Something is going to come up against you in this house of the Lord. Somebody. God didn't give me this for no reason. But I want you to think about this message that you heard today. Some of you are already right now in that battle. And so he gave me this word in the Holy Ghost for you to stay committed to God. For you to stay committed to God. People of God, I want you to repeat after me. I will stay with the Lord no matter what. I choose you, Lord, no matter what. I will be committed to you no matter what. What? Let us all stand in Jesus' name. Whatever may come your way, whatever the situation is, stay committed, people of God. Young people, school is in. A lot is going to be pulling for your attention. Stay committed to God. You're going to get busy on jobs. You're going to get busy on your workforces. Stay committed to God. Stay committed to God. I want to sing a song. We're going to leave here with a song. I don't know if you know this song, but it's a song that I've heard before growing up. And the song says... I'm yours, Lord, everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord, try me now and see, see if I am be completely yours. Come on. I'm yours, Lord, everything I've got, everything I am. Everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. Let me see. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not. Come on. I'm yours, Lord. If I can be completely yours, come on, open your mouth. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I got, come on. Everything I am, everything I got, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. Let me say that one more time. I'm yours.
situation is, stay committed to this thing here. Stay committed to your salvation. Stay committed to God. No matter what. Let's clap our hands unto God one more time. We give God glory. If there's anybody that wants to be committed to God and come into the family, the water is ready. You can be baptized tonight. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. The Bible never tells us to be baptized in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So the way that we be baptized in the Scripture, if you want to be committed to God, in Scripture, everybody was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And so if you haven't put on your Father's name, come on and do it tonight. God is here. God is wanting you to be a part of His relationship and part of the church and the body of Christ. Amen? And so we give God glory. If you want prayer, we will pray for you. Children, we want to continue to keep the children in prayer while they go to school. People of God, let God's hand be upon you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Tell your brother and sister, I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm your Lord. Everything I, come on. Everything I love. Everything I